Did you know course conditions and swing type can really affect which wedge grinds you should be using? Today we're meeting up with Titleist club fitter James Robinson to find out which wedge grinds is right for your game. When it comes to picking new wedges, there can be kind of a great amount of option. So what is one way people can kind of narrow down and find out which is right for them? Yep, so in the, in the new SM9s, there's 23 different options available in, in varying lofts and grinds, and it can be a bit of a minefield. Um, to try and simplify it at the start, there's kind of two-part process that we go through when we fit people into wedges. Gapping is, mm -hmm. is quite straightforward. We know what the pitching wedge is doing, and we want to make sure there's not big gaps into the, the lower lofted ones. And then we've got the different grinds where we go green side off turf and, and, and find the most suitable sole for each individual golfer. If we're closer to the green, if we look at pitching wedge and gap wedges from 46 through to 52, there's only one option available, which is an F grind, and that's a full sole for full shots. So that kind of makes it a little bit more simplified. And then as we get closer to the green and we're playing more partial shots, that's where the sole of the club becomes more important. And in the 60, for example, we've got five different grind options available. So talking through those five different grinds, what are the differences and how might people kind of stand out what would be best for either their swing or their golf course conditions? So um, swing, if we look at angle of attack, we get people that come in very steep into the back of the ball and take large divots. So they might want something uh, at the higher bounce end with a big wider sole. And if somebody's the opposite and they come in very shallow, they probably want lower bounce with more heel, toe and trailing edge relief to allow them to slide the club under the ball depending on obviously their delivery. Course conditions, if it's softer, we tend to go sort of mid to high and if it's firmer, we go sort of mid to low. Yeah. So in terms of those letters, could you just run through each option and kind of what they're about? Yeah, so Bob has been around for, for quite a few years and he's been out on the tour play, working with a, a whole variety of players and these are his greatest hits, he's called them, and these are the best grinds that he's, they're the most popular out on tour as well and some of them are named after tour pros. Um, S Grind, for example, is a Steve Stricker and K's named after Tom Kite. So as he's worked with these players with incredible short games, these are the sort of the set grinds that are now form up the matrix. And then it's a case of identifying as a, as a consumer or as a, a, a club golfer, which one's going to benefit your game the most. So the best thing that we can do is go out onto the chipping green and get the golfer to use the club um, with their technique. And then we can match what they do with the correct sole of the golf club. Perfect. So if we head outside, we can go see how the ball fly kind of changes with different shots. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would be your start point um, when testing these different options out? So we've got five lob wedges here and you'll see they all say 60. So we've got the same loft on all of them. They're all set up the same. So the same shaft, same length, same lie angles. They do, however, have a different sole and the sole can change the performance of what's happening here. So what we've done is we've come out to the chipping green. We've got nice uh, Pro V1 golf balls, turf interaction. You're going to go through and use your technique on a shot that would sort of recreated where you'd reach for loft and we're going to test them against each other. Yeah. And we're going to check the strike on the floor, we're going to check trajectory, and we're going to see which one's going to be beneficial for your game. Perfect. Where do you want me to start? Am I not allowed to know? I'll let you pick. <laughs> it came out quite a bit lower than I thought it would, actually. Good. I think the first one was just a tiny little bit low in the face. Yeah. The other two have actually gone up quite nicely. Is that how you'd want to see it? That sort of height, if you're playing that shot? Probably for this shot, because yeah, I've not yeah. got much uh, <laughs> room to work with. You've given me a really easier <laughs> <laughs> shot to start with. Okay, let me try this one. Notice any different about that one it felt like it came off faster and and lower yeah that was evident but I felt like I struck it good as well like I didn't strike it low off the face it's quite nice because you can get like a lower 
like spinach shot, but it's not necessarily like if you. I guess if you played somewhere hilly and you had lots of short sided shots where you had to get the height to stop it, it might not work as well. And and each sole design is going to enable you to play a specific type of shot. So if all we wanted to do was keep the face quite square and play that low sort of spinny checky shot, then there's going to be an option that's going to be suitable for that. But that might then not be the easiest one to slide so, under and play that more aerial yeah. shot. So what I've actually given you, uh, this one here, you, you can have a look at this one. This was K. So this is our highest bounce option. It's got the widest sole. It actually sits, considering it's got the most yeah. bounce, it actually sits quite tight. The leading edge isn't too high. And it's allowing you to, to, to play that shot. Um, you, you can see or hear it's kind of striking quite low in the face and it is coming off definitely lower, but it is checking up when it gets in there. But I'm not sure I'd want to full up and it up. It's great in the sand as well. <laughs> A bit higher. Yeah, that's a lot like, you can hit it a lot higher and softer. Especially, well, compared to the case. Yeah. We've actually gone from one extreme to the other. So where the K is the highest bounce and the biggest mm -hmm. sole, this is now L, which is the lowest bounce and, and narrowest sole. And what you're probably feeling is the ball's just riding up the grooves a little bit. You can see it's physically coming out on a, on a slightly higher launch and coming in a tiny little bit softer. Oh, nearly hold it. And then we'll try this one. It's interesting actually because I don't normally use a 60 mm. and you'd think it, yeah, I guess you have that misconception that it'd fly a lot higher than it does on the shots but it's still like a very controllable like height. So the, the team developing SM9 in the, in the higher lofted clubs 58, 60, 62 the feedback that they're getting from the best players in the world is they actually want to control the flight of it. They don't want it to sort of balloon and pop up and, and be out of control. So if you look at the back on the trailing edge, we've got this thicker zone, which is it, which is the, the pad is bringing the CG slightly higher up, which actually in the higher lofts controls the flight a little bit better. So you're not getting it out of control and, and going airborne. That is quite deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's super important, like especially in wind, because you really don't want that shot that goes high up because you just can't control the distance at all. Ooh, hold it. So this one is S. This is smack bang in between the two that we've tried. So kind of gives you a sensation. It, it, they've done exactly like we'd expect them to do. The sort of higher bounce ones coming out a little bit lower. So if, if you've got that person that wants to play that lower checky shot, it's great. Uh, and if you're keeping it square, great. The other thing that we find with the K grind as well, it's very good for people that maybe play the ball quite far back in their stance and they get quite a bit of lean going and they get steep into it. That's really going to give them some assistance. And then you get that person that's opposite where maybe the ball's forward of stance and, and you actually want a little bit of uh, trailing edge relief to allow them to slide the club under the ball and then the one that you're holding the S grind at 10 degrees bounce is smack bang in between and giving you sort of best of both worlds so um the one it's thing important people think about that on full shots as well because it's one thing I didn't realize for ages is that if you're someone who hits it too high with your pitch shots going up with the bounce can bring that ball flight down Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Strike location is quite key, uh, and with the different bounce and grinds and soles on the club, can affect where that ball does strike, and that will have an effect on how fast it comes off and how much spins on there and the angle that it's coming off with as well. The, the interesting thing that I see when I'm doing consumer fits is when the club, you, you can hear it kind of dragging through the turf a little bit and it could be some people think that it's always too much bounce so where you've got a big trailing edge and, and a yeah. wide sole yeah that can sometimes make contact with the ground to give you that sensation but also 
if for example you're in the L grind which is the lowest one and you're actually getting the lead and edge catch the turf as you come through that's going to drag as well so it, just because the strike's not clean it doesn't always mean you've got too much it could be that you've got too little as well so going through this process we're not going to say because you do a specific thing this wedge is best for you but if you can get a few demos out the shop or go down onto the chipping green and just use your technique test them against each other and you can see which one's most suitable for your game so we've picked kind of the two favorites that we thought performed the best there what would you go about doing to test them after those initial shots you could argue that a lob wedge is the most versatile club in the bag and we need it to perform in a, in a variety of scenarios so we had a slightly tight lie there to a tight pin and we sort of narrowed it down to a few options it's probably going to be a bunker club as well so we need to make sure that it's going to work in this environment so we'll test a few here against each other see which one performs best so we've got a short side bunker shot as well <laughs> not making it easy for you today Hannah no Class. Yeah, that was nice. It's very good. We're as fit as we can we can use our eyes and ears. It sounded great. It looked nice. It come out how you want it to. Um, didn't have any issues with digging. It slid through quite nicely. We're quite compact in here. We've had some rain recently, so the sand is quite compressed, but come out come out nice and easy. It's quite nice using a 60 on you off such a big hill, so <laughs> at least you know it's easily going to get over it. It's very good. That worked. It's, it's probably a bit of familiarity about that one as well. Yeah, I'm very used to like that from bunkers. So we like this one because on the on the shot that we set up a little while ago, you liked the way that it came out and gave you a bit more spin and check and control. Yeah, and like you could hit that like low chaser, which you need quite a lot like an amateur goal. <laughs> yeah. I could definitely feel like the soul more. You could hear there's a bit of a difference in sound, wasn't there? If any of your viewers struggle in the sand, put the K in play. It's it's a bit of a cheat stick. It comes out <laughs> every single time, yeah. It makes it easier. Yeah, it feels really easy to strike. I like, don't think you have to open it up quite as much either. Like. And interestingly, we uh, had a catch up with Will Harvey, a European tour rep recently, and there's players on tour that will carry two extremes like this, an M grind at eight degrees of bounce and a K grind at 14. And then depending on the, the conditions for that week, they may play one or the other. So would one be better for say soft conditions versus firm? Yeah, I'd say that if you're having more of a sole on, on the sole of the club and a bit more bounce, that is better in soft conditions. And it's going to give you a little bit more assistance when you get, get a bit of steeper into it. But then you may play somewhere. I know you play a lot of links golf and you're going to get some very tight, very firm lies. And having that extra bit, particularly on the trailing edge, may not be favourable for that particular week. Might help you get out of the bunkers on the links. But better in the sand, yeah. I suppose that's also why it can be great though, for people to have different grinds on like different lofts of the wedges so through the bag they have different options for kind of hitting different shots. If you were to have a makeup of say for example 50, 54, 58 and, and the 50 is in there as a gap club we know that's got to have the F grind on it but if we focus on the sort of sand wedge and the lob wedge and you were to have two slightly performing or different grinds on the bottom that doubles the amount of shots at your disposal so yeah so it's a good thing to consider. I'm just going to give you this one back because I think the M out of the sand was just a little bit better for you than the K. Yeah, it's really nice, that. It's even weird using a black finish though, I'm not used to it. <laughs> Right, that's all for today. If you have any questions about any of these products or anything in the Titleist lineup, feel free to drop them in the comments below or send me a line on Twitter or Instagram. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications too. And if you're after more golf content, head over to the National Club Golfer social media channels for more.